In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I broke the Gale skid steer. Guys, tell me what I'm doing wrong here. There's a big mistake that I made in this video. If you catch it, you'll be entered to win a Stony Ridge Farmer hat. Hey there folks, it's Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another beautiful day here on the Stony Ridge. It's a little bit breezy today and I have a major issue going on. I say major, a major minor issue. So I already broke <laughs> the Gale RT210. <laughs> and the way it broke was there's a short somewhere in the seat position. And I'm gonna show you guys what's going on. Right now, I've got the trencher on here. I was out trenching. I was actually moving some dirt during a live stream when all this started. It's an odd uh, symptom. Maybe you guys can tell me if you're familiar with these machines, post some comments down there. Let's get busy trying to fix the peanut. This is the peanut. Miguel, good times. Free to work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life. Times like this. If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you just what you can kiss. That's right. I've got the gale warming up here just a little bit to operating temperature if I possibly can. I'm gonna show you guys what the symptom is and you're gonna hear it aside from that beeping that won't go away, a super annoying beep. So this is a cockpit right here. We'll get a little close up here in just a minute. The cockpit is free floating in this machine. In other words, it uh, slides forward and back. And the issue that I'm having is this. When I put my weight in the seat, It's doing that. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but what that does is kill my throttle response. So I no longer have any throttle response when it does that. Uh, we'll sit down in here and get the camera a little close up and show you. The way this presented itself, beep, 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 beep. Okay, I know I'm sitting down. <laughs> it's such an annoying beep. Um, I know I'm sitting down, little peanut. So here's what we got. I'll put my weight, my full weight in the seat. Hear that? Right there. There is an electrical problem. There's a short somewhere in the wiring harness in this cockpit. And this entire thing is one big piece, okay? Now when it does this, I'm gonna do it again. Maybe, right there. The throttle has no response. No response whatsoever. If I lift my butt out of the seat just a little, I have full throttle response. Uh, it doesn't seem to affect the operation of the vehicle whatsoever, so neither joystick is affected. This one works the bucket portion, and this one over here works the driving. So forward, reverse, left, right, horn. This cockpit is a standalone unit. So we're gonna raise up this critter right here. Oh, it's annoying. It's really tight quarters in here. I'm a big, tall guy, and it's hard for me to get in. There's a wiring harness with an issue. I'll show you. This is how we move our seat forward and back. Right there is as far forward as it goes. This is a pretty cool little feature right here for your weight, wherever how much weight uh, you have in the seat, and it's set at the highest setting right now for the largest guy. So you got a little skinny guy here and a great big guy here, and that's what that arrow points to. So let's look over here, and let's show you how all this stuff works. So there has to be weight in the seat. You hear that? That means the seat sensor is working, okay? So I just barely put any pressure on there. This apparatus falls down and these two little magnetic deals connect with one another. There's one on each side, okay? That does not appear to be the problem. Again, the seat sensor is not the problem at all, all right? Now, when we reach back here, here is where we run into a problem. As I jiggle this wiring harness, that's when I start having the problem. Oh man, this is all the room that I have right here, okay? There's no room to work. So I've got to figure out, first things first, how I can get this seat 
out of my way. What we got is a problem with the wiring harness and gosh, chasing down these things can be such a royal pain in the butt. My suspicion is that it's right down in there in the hardest place to get to. So I did unplug a few things like the seat sensor to try and see if it was that sensor causing the problem. And what we have is just some sort of a short, uh, whether a wire is pulling out and this goes through the firewall and up underneath the hood, which is back here. That's a water bottle, we don't need that. So I'm gonna climb down here and <laughs> we're gonna try and set a GoPro up in here and show you guys the disassembly process and how I'm going to figure out which wire or wires have pulled loose when I hit a hard bump and caused this problem. Oh, I do not wanna do this. I've been putting this off for a while. Let's get busy. Chasing down wiring problems is the most horrible thing. It's in there, that's where it is. I move that independent, it doesn't do it. It does it when I do this. Right, we're loose, I think we can lift up and out. Somewhat, at least get it out of the way. Got much, 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 much more room back here now. Plenty of space to work. Let's just see, is this thing simply unplugged? It looks like it just popped out of the plug right here. Let me get the flashlight and show you guys. So this plug right here appears to be set nicely in there. That, that right there, that little metal piece. I don't know. I'm gonna give it a good hard shove. Up. But we can access all the wires now and check them and it's not really budging. Let me get a pry bar. Enter pry bar. Oh, oh, oh I felt it move. Oh, I'm gonna damage more than I'm doing good here. Very, very. Oh, feels a little loose. Let's fire it up. Okay, that's our harness. Let's just start checking wires and see. We probably just pulled one out is all the problem is. So I need to go wire by wire. A couple tools here, tools of the trade. This is a set of hemostats and this is a dental tool. So we'll use that to try and find this wire. plug away at this guys we'll see you in just a second this is a job you don't need to see me twist every wire when we find it I'll show you got it narrowed down here this is the wire right here that's the one that's the culprit I have no earthly idea how to fix that Oh yeah, man, it's heavy. And I just bashed my shin. Oh goodness, oh, that's a heavy duty chair right there. Whew. Man, oh, I had to do some bolts and some wiring to get that out. Now we can see. So I've got like four screws I've got to take loose. It's getting dark on me. Uh, I'm gonna flip the cab up tonight. In order to flip the cab up, all I have to do is take these two bolts loose and it should rock on back. All right, so this is a 19 mil and this gives me the opportunity to use a cool tool. <laughs> okay, don't drop it. This is a 92 piece clutch uh, impact set, man. Awesome stuff, let's open it up. It has arrows to tell you which way it goes, which is awesome so you don't mess up and open it wrong. Nice. Been wanting to get into that. Yeah, daddy. Nice. First time I've tipped the cab back on this one. Up, up, and away. Whew. Nice. We'll see you guys in the morning. 
days later, guys. It's five days later. This machine's been sitting out here in front of my shop for five days, gone through two rainstorms. And let me tell you, this was not as easy of a fix as I thought it was going to be. I'm going to raise the cab up real quick and I'll show you guys what's underneath here and we'll get a shot at what I discovered. And we're gonna take the entire wiring harness out of the cab and we're gonna lay it over here on the workbench and I'll show you exactly what I do. I've got a simple solution, but I had to sleep on it a few nights. So there are two bolts right here. Just remove those two bolts and this thing is basically spring loaded. It'll ease up. This is how you open the cab up on your skid loader. Okay, it comes up, it locks into place right there and you see a lot of dirt. And this is the wiring harness. Let's get you a little closer. This spot right here, we'll tip it up. That's the hole that the wiring harness went through. You probably can see a little bit of daylight right there. What I had to do, I went online and researched how to get this thing off. This was all taped up, wrapped up in electrical tape. And <laughs> being wrapped up in electrical tape, it was totally full of water. That was. Okay, so that was causing some issues, I think. And there's a bolt right here and you can kind of see it down in there. I had to loosen that bolt and thus unplug this. So I was trying to pry at it and I couldn't pry it loose because it was bolted in. So this run, this is what you'd call the firewall. It runs right up through there and that connects up to the other one. Well, let me reach up here and we'll pull this guy back down. Getting a pretty good uh, lesson in skid steer mechanics right here. You know, what's funny is we'll do a skid steer video today and tomorrow we'll be cooking <laughs> in the kitchen. Good old country life. Now, you stay. Gosh, I might have to put a bolt in to keep it down now. Stay. <laughs> and we'll put a bolt in. Go down. You'll stay down. There we go. That'll hold it. So the good news is <laughs> this is failed. Okay, there are several wires that are kind of pulled loose and such. So what I did is I went on and ordered the entire harness. And we're gonna take this out, this out, we're gonna put all this on the workbench and we're gonna replace this entire wiring harness. I'm gonna hang on to this and try to repair it and that way I'll have a spare because I plan on keeping the skid loader for a very, very long time. Let's get this stuff out and on the workbench. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> This looks really complicated, but I assure you it's not going to be that bad. Here we go. All right. Perfect. We're going to set it up just like the controls were in the machine. Inside this box holds the key. Uh, I found these on, on the internet. The company Manitou North America, I think is what it's called. I'll post a link to the company's website. If you have a problem like this, very, very handy. I also ordered, bye-bye, all of the little clips that I pulled off and broke. So very cool, they're like zip tie clips. Now the new wiring harness is right here. All I'm gonna do is lay it out in the same orientation and everything here should virtually be plug and play. Should be super, super simple. We got a few things underneath here that are interesting. There is a, I believe you call it a 12, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a nine prong pin underneath here. I discovered, I had no idea this was here. So very handy to have that for plugging in electrical critters to your uh, skid steer. Okay, in case you got something that has some electrical stuff on there. All I'm gonna do is unplug all of these from here and snap them right back into place. Simply plug and play, unplug one. That right there is a cigarette lighter. We'll plug that one back. That one looks a little bit fried right there. That's what happens when you have a vehicle like this, it's been stored outside, things don't look so good. We're gonna put a little bit of uh, dielectric uh, lubricant on here. What I'm using is copper anti-seize. I'm just putting a tiny dab on. 
Got that guy loose. Pop this little fella off right there. We really just have two more plugs. It's very, very simple. So what we're looking for, this is park brake switch right here. We want to find park brake switch in this mess. Right there, park brake switch. Unplug and plug this one back in. Pop this little guy off. This is left hand joystick. Left hand joystick. That's it, good to go. All the rest of this stuff, aside from that plug, uh, all this is not used, okay? So all this stuff will get stored up inside here. And this is for a cab model. We'll zip tie that and get it all tightened up and out of the way. This and this guy. This is a little retaining ring. Press that in place. Snug that guy down. This doesn't have to be super, super tight, guys. It's gonna hold, okay? Just keep an eye on it. There's a rubber seal right here and a rubber seal in there. Never replaced a wiring harness in a skid steer, this is a great video for you. Don't ever tighten and break anything. Folks, this is as simple as ABCs right here. We've got one side completely loose. Again, I'll hang on to this for spare parts always good to hang on to it. I'll just hang it in the back of the shed. If I need it one day, I've got it for sure. So handy thing to have. And if I lose like this plug, if something were to happen to it, I've got one. These little zip ties are really handy to have. I should have ordered 20 of them. Um, I'll show you how they work. So you press this guy in to the little hole right here for support and then zip tie your wire into place. what's got to go through. Okay, plug this down in here. This is our harness and this harness connects right up to here. This has a 5 16 bolt inside there and I've got my ratchet right here so I'll go ahead Get this lined up on that bolt, and then we'll be ready to press it up into there and tighten her down. This is a moderately delicate process to get this thing lined up perfectly. We have several screws we've got to line up and get started right here. Hold it in place so we can plug it in. Yeah. I think it'll only go one way, but we're gonna test it. I do believe it'll only go one way. Yeah, it only goes one way. That's it, that's the way. Snug as a bug. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of electrical tape, but not too much. So this thing had way too much tape on it before, and it caused it to hold water. And we do not want this thing to hold water. We want it to protect the wire, but not hold water. So I'm actually going to cut a tiny weep hole in this critter so that I'm not dealing with water in that harness. Now, 
this vehicle might have been stored outside. Uh, lessons to be learned, John. Don't wash your equipment so much because you can cause serious, serious electrical problems by washing. Keep it clean, dry, and serviceable. You wash equipment with a power washer too much and you're gonna cause yourself some headache and heartache like what was going on right here. We're gonna leave a little gap right here and I'm gonna cut a tiny weep hole with a razor knife right there. So we're gonna tape this up too. We wanna protect our wires again and we'll tape it good. No bare wire showing, but we also want to make sure that we've got adequate water drainage. Don't want to run into replacing the wiring harness from here back. That would be a total bummer. I can cut my zip ties off of there. Get those out of the way. Now the seat has to go back in and then I'll plug everything up to the seat, bolt it up, and we'll test this machine. Yeah. Last thing we've got to install are these armrests and they are fully adjustable, you can see right here. We've got to put a bolt up through here and get this in just the right position, like so. Slide that back just a little bit. Same thing with this bolt back here, get it in position. Take the nut off and carefully uh, lay this armrest right over here on top of it. Okay, there's one there, there's one there. Same thing on the other side. Everything is hooked up good back here. Uh, this floats freely back here a little more than I would prefer. However, what we found was the, the freer it floats, the less likely we are to do the same damage again. So I am actually going to just lightly zip tie this thing Oh yeah, okay, key is on, I hear the pump, contact, Woo -hoo. all right, now, here's what will tell the tale, that's what my problem was, uh. <laughs> test the lift, make sure everything's working right, Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Might take a camera with us. Up. Oh. Yep. Left, right, forward, back. Buttons work. Woohoo! Yeah! Nice! Now I can actually put my machine back to work and start trenching again. Guys, I love the Gale. The Gale machine is super cool. It has a track tensioning system on it that automatically tensions your tracks for you so you don't have to worry about ever tensioning your tracks. And we're gonna reach out to some track folks and we're gonna get the best tracks for farm use here on the Stony Ridge Farm. I can't wait when we change those out. They're not ready to change yet. We've only got, I guess it was like 300 hours, something like that on this machine. It's about time for its service. <sighs> That's it. Whew, got it done. That wiring harness cost about $500. Imagine what it would cost me to take that to a dealership and do that job. Wow, saved a ton of money today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this awesome Mechanic Mondays on the Stony Ridge. Pound that like button. We'll see you next time on the farm, all right? Woo! We'll come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life here in Sweden. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Woo! Nate, hi. I'd love a phone call. Hi, Brian, that fix-it guy. How are you? Oh. <laughs>
I'm good. How are you, sir? I'm good. I forgot to turn uh, my ringer off while I'm filming. I'm fired. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> What's also annoying is that I can never find a flat tip screwdriver. So when I go to Lowe's, I'm going to buy 10 of them. How's about a flat tip screwdriver? There it is. Good job, little buddy. Oh, perfect. It's not a flat tip. It's a Torx. That would make too much sense to be the same size. It would be crazy talk. It's like that's got a little blue Loctite on it. Wrangler Star would be proud. Oh, are you smarter than a zip tie? Probably not. Oh, daddy, don't, don't fall. <laughs> Sound like Woody Woodpecker. 